Hey, what's up guys? Justin here and welcome to 65 Drums. Today's a full in-depth tutorial on the TD-17 drum module. I'm gonna show you how to import your own samples, layer sounds, change the virtual room type that you're in, the virtual wall type, tape the symbols, make the symbols larger or smaller. Also in the next couple of weeks, I'll be making a series of videos about that TD-17 drum set, but let's get over to the tutorial. All right, so if you wanna edit one of these kits and not mess it up, you can actually copy, you know, Acoustic One or Compact, to one of those 50 empty slots. The way you do that is press other, and then you just use the down arrow buttons to go over to copy, and then you choose which one you wanna move. So we wanna move compact to kit number uh, 98. So we press execute, and then we gotta press enter, and there we go. Now if we go to 98, we're on compact. And if we edit it from here and start getting lost and we don't remember what the original settings of the kit were, you can always go and scroll back to, what was it, kit number three, and then you can see and sort of like A, B, back and forth to what the differences are. Or you can be like me and just edit the kits directly, and then when you mess everything up, you'll, you can go and factory reset everything. If you wanna factory reset something because you've just gone to the point of no return and you can't remember what the actual kit sounded like, you can press set up, go all the way down to the bottom, and then press factory reset. That will wipe this entire thing and basically make it like it was at the factory when it was first manufactured. All right, so let's talk about these different buttons down here. So for assign, this lets you choose what sound you want for each drum. You select the drum by just tapping on it. And as you can see, a corresponding light. So we're on snare right now, and we can do the scroll wheel to change the sound. So this is maple. Anyway, so you choose whatever sound you want, and that's what the assign button does. And then if you press strainer, so F2, now you can adjust it from loose one all the way to tight three. You might not be able to do this on every single sound, but on this one, they do give you that option. So if we go to button number three, that would select the sub option. This basically is the layering option inside of the drum module, so you can layer sounds. So let's say I wanna have uh, a snare sound, so that's what you select. You, you select the category right here, and then you press the down button, and now you can select the individual sounds. So if we wanna have the brass sound, we can turn it on and off. So if we turn it on, we can hear what it would sound like together. If we turn it off, we can hear what it would sound like without it. If we press the arrow buttons, we can decide how we want the sounds to layer. So if we use the scroll wheel, we can make it fade into that sound, and we can adjust how much that fade is, or you can switch. We can make it where it's only starting to switch the sound when you hit it at a velocity of 50. So if you hit the pad half as hard as it's capable of sensing, then it would switch to that new sound. So this is what it sounds like just with the sub off. And if we turn it on, and you can hear it actually switched right there. If we go back to, let's say fade two, it's fading in after 50. If you go down, you can set where you want that fade point to be. And then you can adjust how loud it is. So for example, if you want a really, really nice sounding China symbol, you could actually take two China symbols, pitch one up, pitch one down, and then have them stacked or mixed together just to make that wall of sound that you want with that particular uh, symbol. You can do whatever the heck you want here. And if we go down even more, we have the tuning of that sound, that layer, and then we have the muffling, and then we have the strainer. So we have a lot going on right here. And then I can just turn it off because I don't actually want it on this kit. So let's back out. That's what you can do with the assign button. Going over to level, this is very, very simple. All you gotta do is you hit a symbol, or you can just actually select it with this little pad select button. So that seems kind of simple, but you also have the ability to independently adjust the volume of the edge of the pad and the bow or head area of the pad. And that's what this H and R button does. So you can see how that white area keeps flipping back and forth because right now I'm hitting the edge of the symbol, Right here, I'm hitting the bow area of the symbol, and I can independently adjust the volume right there. You don't wanna mess with that too much because then the sound of it will be off if, you, or if you're too drastic about it. But what if you wanna split, let's say, tom input number two, and make it so it's controlling two separate one zone symbols? Well, now you can independently adjust the volume and all that stuff. You can also pan everything independently as well. So you can see where the white lines are together, and then now white line is on top. Now it's on the bottom as I hit the edge of the hi-hat. All right, let's move ahead to the user sample button. When you press this, this lets you navigate through all of your user samples. 
These aren't mine. These are actually just ones that were already inside of the drum module. Let's talk about how you actually import your own. What you'll need is an SD card like this. This is actually one of the SD cards I use to film all my videos. And you have to format this inside of the drum module, I believe, for any of this to work. So what you do is you just insert this in the little slot here on the side, which I'm trying to just figure out where that is. There we go. What you'll wanna do is go over here to setup. So SD card, press enter, and then you'll wanna go down here to card format. What you'll do is you'll press enter, and then you'll press execute. And no, I actually don't wanna format it because I've already loaded in some samples. I've already gone through all this process but that's how you do that. Okay, so let's say you formatted the card. Now you'll wanna take that card over to your laptop and put some samples onto it. And then finally bring it back over to your drum module. There's an actual folder that they put there on the SD card when you format it so you know exactly where to place those samples. Now that you've loaded it back into the drum module, press user sample and then press menu. Here is where you'll import the samples. So if you're down here, go back up to it, press enter, and now you'll decide what sample you want to import. Now the names of my samples here are kind of long, so it's kind of hard for me to see exactly what they are. Um, so just a pro tip, make sure that your names of your samples are kind of short. So let's just say I want that one. So I'm gonna press enter, and then I'm gonna choose an empty slot. So I'm gonna choose, uh, yeah, just choose number 10. So press execute, and then enter. So it's kind of tedious to load these in, but it's just basically what you gotta do. So now that you've got it inside of the drum module, press assign, and then go down here to whatever you want it to basically be assigned to. So I've tapped my snare right here, but you could also assign it to your hi-hat or your tom, whatever you want. Let's go back to the snare, and I'm gonna press execute. Do you want to? Yes. I think I've assigned it, so let's see what it sounds like. Sub on. Okay, so that was totally my bad. Because the name is so long, I accidentally assigned a basically a section of a loop to the snare instead of a snare sound like I was trying to. But you get the whole point. All you gotta do is go to user sample, you'll import the sound via pressing menu and then import. And when you go back out of that, now you can assign it and then you decide what you wanted to assign it to and you're good to go. Let's move ahead to the next section, tuning. So when you press the tuning button, depending on what you hit, it'll change what you can actually do to it. So under symbol, they've decided not to call it tuning, they call it adjusting the size. It, it's basically tuning. So we can make it into a 20 inch symbol, a 27 inch symbol. Or you can make it into a 15 inch symbol and you can go down from there. If you go over here to snare, So it's really fun to play around with that stuff. And again, you can adjust the head rim stuff. All right, so let's back out of that and go over here to muffling. So muffling, again, is just putting virtual tape on all the drums. I usually leave mine all the way open, but you do you. And then if you hit one of the cymbals, like the hi-hat, this actually doesn't put any tape on the hi-hat. You can adjust how open or close it is. So if you go up one, it's always gonna be close sounding. So basically, if you play a lot of double kick stuff, but you want a closed hi-hat sound, this is the menu you would go to in order to achieve that. Or you can go all the way to fixed four, and it's always gonna be open no matter what you do, no matter how hard you're pressing on that pedal. So it's very powerful. Now, if you hit one of the crash cymbals, you're gonna be able to put virtual tape on the cymbal. Oh, that's kind of weird. Before I forget, I need to take this tape off of it because that's awful. Okay, so next up we have Other. This is the part of the menu where you can really start changing the way everything sounds. Let's start with Ambience. You'll notice that you have an Ambience uh, knob right here. So you can turn all the way to 100 or turn it off completely. Usually, just in the factory reset form of this drum module, you'll wanna make sure that it's all the way on because it's very, very subtle, just the Ambience that they have out of the box. But when you start messing around with room type and stuff, uh, you can get really crazy. So, so it's kind of hard to really hear the difference there, but let me go over here to kits number 100. So this is the kit that I use that I mess around with. And if we go back here to other and then ambience, you can hear what this sounds like. So 
So as you can see, it sounds like it's in a huge sports arena or Roland's version of a sports arena. You can change the room size, the room type. Let's play on the snare and then move through different room types. So that's kind of cool. It's really fun to mess around with. I'm gonna go back to sports arena and then go down. The reason why all these rooms sort of sound kind of similar is because they're all the same room size. I've set everything to huge right now. These don't change when you switch the different room types. So if we go from sports arena and just make it a little bit smaller. A tiny sports arena. Then finally you have stuff like the room shape. You have the wall type. I like curtain because it doesn't sound as harsh. If we go over to something like, let me see here, uh, plaster. As you can see, it sounds a lot less harsh, so I like that. If you go down, you have the mic position, then you have the level. You can adjust the send of all these different things in the other section of the drum module. So we can adjust how much of this ambience, how much of this sports arena sound we have, going to the kick drum, the snare, the toms, and all the way down through everything on this drum set. So very, very powerful. And again, you still have the H and R button right there as well. So let's back out of this. And now we have multi effects. So you can turn this on or off, but you can have delay, you can have tape echo. Reverse delay is always fun. It's kind of hard to use these things in real life, but they're fun to play around with. And maybe in certain specific instances, they will be helpful. Phaser is really, really fun if you uh, get the settings right. Tempo sync, I'm not exactly sure what that is. If we crank up the depth. If I turn off the ambience, you can hear it a lot better. So yeah, you have all kinds of different effects and you have some really in-depth controls over those effects. Now, if we go over here to pad EQ, now we can individually EQ every single drum and we can turn it on and then we can turn it off so you're sort of you know, A, B testing what it sounded like before and after you started messing with the EQ. As always with EQ, less is more, except when it isn't. Okay, so back to the other screen, we go down. Now we have the volume. Again, really simple stuff. You can just read it on the screen right there. If we go back, we can name whatever kit that we're on. I don't name my kits very often just because it takes forever to name stuff, but you definitely can. If we go back, uh, we can adjust the MIDI notes for everything. This is very, very powerful when you're using drum software, but it's not really, really needed right now. I'm very glad you can default everything at a push of a button because when you mess stuff up, it's very hard to find your way back home if you didn't have that. All right, going back, if we go down one more, now we can copy a kit and save and load a kit. Over here, this is really cool. You can actually save kits to an SD card. There's actually a folder for that. What that actually gets put there when you format the card. So be sure to format your SD card. But also if you ever buy something from like, I don't know, vexpressions.com where they go and they EQ and do all the ambience and effects for you, you'll spend like, I don't know, 30 bucks or whatever. They'll send you the file, you'll put it on an SD card, you load that on here, and now someone else has already spent the hours and hours messing with all the settings to make the drum module sound really good. Now for me, I've never actually spent the money on that sort of thing because I like messing with that sort of stuff myself, but some people like just taking all the work out of it. They want the best possible out of their drum module. So they'll buy a settings pack or they'll go on a, a like a drum forum or something where they can share their settings packs and then you can just get them for free. But it probably won't be as good as the paid versions, but it is an option. If you're interested in this sort of thing, I've actually made a full in-depth video talking about the pros and cons of paying for these settings packs. Okay, so the stuff I'm not really gonna spend too much time on is like the click. We all know how that works. You just set the BPM and you can turn it on or turn it off. You can adjust the mix volume of it. This takes us back to a setting we were already talking about before and you can get to the menu right here where you're adjusting the beat, the rhythm type, the sound, and the panning. That is very useful stuff. A click is one of the most underutilized sections of any drum module. The coaching, I don't use this stuff very often, but you can play to a tempo and it'll show you in real time how on or off the beat you are. I actually bought a dedicated pad just for this a couple years ago. And then finally, if you press the song button, you can play to any one of the songs inside of here. Some of them are cheesy, some of them are good. 
you just press play or pause right here. You can hold down slow to slow the song down, hold down fast to, to speed it up. And then finally, I believe you can actually import your own WAV files into here. So you can speed up and slow down whatever song you're trying to practice to. So that's actually a cool trick. Okay, so for the last section of the video, we're gonna talk about pad setup. Now, thankfully, because Roland is so calibrated out of the box, you probably won't have to touch nearly anything. But whenever you connect new pads, you will have to change some of these settings. So go to setup, go down over here to pad settings, press enter. And then now you can actually change what pad you've plugged into the drum set. So let me hit the snare right here. This is the PDX 12. Let me hit the kick drum right here. This is the KD 10. But let's say you've upgraded the kick drum to the KD 120. You'll actually scroll over until it says KD 120. And now it's set up to be working nearly perfectly with that new pad. Now, if you go down here to like sensitivity, you can adjust how sensitive it is. The threshold is how hard you have to hit before it starts picking up that you're hitting it. You might think, oh wow, just set everything to zero so it picks up everything. But with a kick drum, sometimes your foot will accidentally hit the kick drum without you even noticing it. So that's why you can't put it on zero with most kick drum pads. So moving down the curve basically tells the drum module how you want it to respond to your playing. Do you want it to basically pick up everything from soft to loud? That's linear. If you wanna do expressive, that'll be a little bit more heavily weighted towards the, the basically the soft stuff. Log one, log two, those are basically making it so nearly everything you play is very, very loud. Set it to linear for most everything. Going to advanced features, most people won't touch this stuff unless you're messing around with like triggers and different things like that. I have to mess around with advanced settings a lot because I review a lot of DIY gear, but this lets you adjust scan time, retrigger cancel, mass time, X talk cancel, and there's some more stuff over here with the rim, the rim gain and stuff. You probably won't have to mess with this unless you're messing around with drum triggers with the TD-17 drum module. The good news is, if you need to know about all this stuff, I've actually made an in-depth video explaining everything. So let's get out of here and let's scroll back down. So we can adjust the LCD. We can adjust how bright it is, how contrasty it is. Uh, usually I like the brightness of stuff to be pretty bright. Uh, for the sake of the camera, let me just put it back down here to uh, five. Let's exit out of that. They always put you back up at the top of the menu, so I have to keep scrolling down. You can adjust MIDI, USB, auto on and off. My one tip for auto on and off is keep it at 30 minutes if you're just, you know, a normal Joe playing, you know, for a half an hour at night. But if you're performing, set it to off so it doesn't accidentally turn off right before you're about to play on stage. So that's my only tip there. For me, I'm gonna leave it to 30 minutes. And then finally, we have the hi-hat settings. This is where you can calibrate how open and closed and how sensitive it is and all that stuff. The VH10 is pretty well calibrated out of the box, but if you're still not satisfied, this is where you can calibrate it. So just spend the time to mess around and get these settings down just right. I'm gonna see how well ATV symbols work with this, so I will be messing with the calibration there. Okay, so that's the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in a few.